when the government guarantees the mortgage, the borrower can get a better rate than if the government doesn't guarantee the mortgage. And that was supposed to make it more affordable because the borrower could get a lower rate. Because when the government guarantees a mortgage, that mortgage effectively becomes a U.S. Treasury. Um, now, there was never an explicit guarantee on those mortgages. It's implicit. And so mortgages had a interest rate that was a bit higher than U.S. Treasuries for uh, the same maturity, uh, but not that much higher. And certainly significantly lower than if the borrower had to rely on his own creditworthiness to get a loan, because obviously uh, he'd be a lot less creditworthy than the U.S. government, and so the banks would charge a commensurately higher rate. In today's video, we explore a recent discussion by Peter Schiff, a prominent economist and financial commentator, known for his forthright views on government policies and their economic implications. Schiff critically examines the U.S. government's recent announcement to guarantee second mortgages and its potential impact on the economy. We'll break down his key points, analyze the consequences of such policies, and discuss the broader implications for the housing market and inflation. Let's dive in. Peter Schiff begins by highlighting the U.S. government's recent decision to guarantee second mortgages, a movie views as highly inflationary and counterproductive to the Federal Reserve's efforts to combat inflation with tighter monetary policy. Schiff argues that this policy is nonsensical and should be met with loud criticism from the Federal Reserve. However, he points out that the Fed remains silent, lacking the courage to criticize congressional actions due to its supposed independence. Schiff emphasizes that the purpose of an independent Federal Reserve is to criticize government actions when necessary. An independent Fed should not shy away from criticizing Congress, especially when its policies are foolish and inflationary, undermining the Fed's primary goal of fighting inflation. The government's move to guarantee second mortgages is a clear example of working at cross-purposes with the Fed's objectives. Moreover, Schiff argues that the government never learns from its mistakes and continues to repeat them. He recalls the financial crisis of 2008, which was partly caused by government-guaranteed mortgages. Despite this, the government has only increased its involvement in guaranteeing mortgages, extending these guarantees to multifamily properties as well. This, Schiff argues, goes beyond the original intent of promoting homeownership and instead supports real estate investment businesses. Schiff criticizes the government's expansion of power, noting that the original goal of making homeownership more affordable has backfired. Government-guaranteed mortgages have led to higher home prices, as buyers can borrow more money, bidding up prices. Consequently, homeownership has become less affordable, contrary to the government's intentions. Schiff explains that without government guarantees, lenders would require down payments and assess borrowers' creditworthiness more rigorously, leading to lower home prices and more equity for homeowners. What I learned was that the U.S. government had recently announced that it would be guaranteeing second mortgages. Now, this is going to be another huge problem. And it is also highly inflationary. You know, at a time where the Federal Reserve is supposedly fighting inflation with a, a tighter monetary policy, to have the U.S. government enact an inflationary policy like this one. Okay. Not only does it make no sense, but it should evoke loud criticism from the Federal Reserve. But of course, crickets from the Fed governors because they're too much of a you know wimpy to criticize anything that happens in Congress. In fact, as I pointed out, they're now hiding behind the idea that uh, the Fed is independent for meaning it can't crit be critical. The purpose of an independent Fed is so it can criticize the government. See, if the Fed wasn't independent, they wouldn't criticize the government because you know the, the government would be in charge and the government would prevent the Fed from being critical. But if you have an independent Fed, criticize Congress. I mean, what's the point of having an independent central bank if it's not going to criticize the government when it does something foolish, or in this case, foolish and inflationary at a time where the Fed is trying to fight inflation. 
I mean, that is its, its most important goal right now is fighting inflation. And now you have the government doing something so counterproductive as guaranteeing second mortgages. But not only you know does this uh, fly in the face of what the Fed is, is trying to do, and so now you have, again, more examples of the government and the Fed walk, work, walk, working at cross purposes. Um, but it also shows that the government never learns from its mistakes. And in fact, it never stops repeating its mistakes. And the reason that the government doesn't learn from its mistakes is because it still doesn't understand that it made the mistake. You would think that after the financial crisis of 2008, the government might have learned its lesson about the dangers of government guaranteed mortgages. But no, I mean, not only has the government not stopped guaranteeing mortgages, it guarantees more mortgages than ever before. In fact, Following the 2008 financial crisis, I forget exactly when, I testified against this in Congress, and it passed. But the government began guaranteeing multifamily uh, mortgages. So if you buy a duplex or a fourplex, the government will guarantee that loan too. Now remember, the whole purpose of the government guaranteed mortgage in the first place was you know, to, to help um, people qualify for a mortgage, right? The, the goal was to have more home ownership. And so the government promoted that goal by guaranteeing mortgages. Well, if that's the goal, and it's not even a goal that should be pursued, but if it is the goal, then why do you um, guarantee multifamily? Because these are investment properties. So if somebody's buying real estate as an investment, why should the government guarantee that loan? I mean, clearly, it's not just trying to help somebody try to afford a house. You're helping somebody start a real estate business. That's not why the government initially got into the business of guaranteeing mortgages. So, again, you know, once the government gains some type of power, it constantly expands that power well beyond the original intent of why it got the power. And, of course, you know, part of that goal with guaranteeing mortgages was to help make home ownership more affordable because when the government guarantees the mortgage the borrower can get a better rate than if the government doesn't guarantee the mortgage and that was supposed to make it more affordable because the borrower could get a lower rate because when the government guarantees a mortgage that mortgage effectively becomes a u.s treasury um now there was never an explicit guarantee on those mortgages it's implicit and so mortgages had a interest rate that was a bit higher than u.s treasuries for uh the same maturity uh but not that much higher and certainly significantly lower than if the borrower had to rely on his own credit worthiness to get a loan because obviously uh, he'd be a lot less credit worthy than the U.S. government. And so the banks would charge a commensurately higher rate. And so by getting this government guarantee, uh, the borrower gets a lower uh, mortgage and therefore homes are more affordable, except it backfired on the government. Because once the government started guaranteeing mortgages, well, then it became easier for home buyers to take out bigger mortgages. In fact, the banks didn't give a damn. As long as the mortgage was guaranteed by the government, didn't matter how big it was. Now, the government had loan limits, so if the loan was too big, then the government wouldn't guarantee it, and then so then the banks wouldn't make the loan. But as long as you borrowed within the government limits, the government didn't give a damn. I mean, the, the lenders didn't care, right, because it was government guaranteed. And, and so what happened was home buyers could borrow a lot more money since they were borrowing with the government co-signing the loan than they could without the government co-signing the loan. And so they were able to borrow more money to bid up home prices. And so as a result of government guaranteed mortgages, real estate prices 
rose much higher than they otherwise would have been absent those guarantees. So again, the government's plan achieved the opposite of the intention. Instead of making home ownership more affordable, the government guarantees made homes less affordable. It made homes more expensive. And now people had to borrow even more money to buy them. But they were able to do that because of the government guarantee. But they would have been better off borrowing without a government guarantee, paying a higher interest, but borrowing a lot less money. And so they would have got the home cheaper. And so they would have had more equity. Also, they didn't have to put the down payments. That was the other thing. It didn't matter if there wasn't a down payment. The government just guaranteed the loan anyway. So without the government guarantee, the lenders wanted a down payment. They wanted the borrower to have skin in the game. But once the government guarantees the mortgage, they don't give a damn whether the buyer has any skin in the game at all because they can't lose. He further discusses the moral hazard created by government guarantees. Lenders, knowing they are protected by the government, have no incentive to ensure borrowers can afford their loans. This leads to reckless borrowing and inflated home prices, contributing to economic instability. Schiff recalls the bankruptcy of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac in 2008, which were heavily involved in government-guaranteed mortgages and the subsequent government bailout, which made the implicit guarantee explicit. When the government guarantees the mortgage, the lender can't lose. So who cares? Who cares if this guy could actually afford this home and is ever going to pay back the mortgage? Because the government's going to pay it back. That's the moral hazard that the government created when they guaranteed mortgages in the first place. And of course, Fannie and Freddie, which were the agencies uh, through which the government put through this guarantee, they all went bankrupt in 2008 because of the losses. And of course, the, the government, instead of allowing the holders of Fannie and Freddie insured mortgages to lose money, the government made that uh, implicit guarantee explicit by basically bailing everybody out, except the stockholders of Fannie and Freddie. Uh, they got clobbered. Now, you know, if you look at the stocks, they're coming back now, actually. There is a, a trade. There are people now betting that Donald Trump, if he wins, is going to resurrect these guys from the grave. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about Trump uh, later in the podcast. I, I happened to catch his interview on the All In podcast, and so I had some comments about that. But a free market guy, if Trump was a free market guy, the last thing he would do would be to resurrect uh, Fannie and Freddie from the grave. In fact, we should kill them off completely. The government should get totally out of guaranteeing mortgages. But, of course, they're not going to do that. In fact, they're doing something even worse. As I said at the top of the podcast, now they're not just going to guarantee the primary mortgage. They're going to guarantee the second mortgage. And just like the government now owns the mortgage market because of this guarantee. And again, the government should not be involved at all. If somebody wants to buy a house, they should have to do it based on their own credit worthiness if they're going to borrow money. Despite these lessons, the government is now extending guarantees to second mortgages, further entrenching itself in the housing market. Schiff argues that the government should exit the mortgage market entirely, allowing a free market to operate more efficiently. He believes that home buyers should rely on their own creditworthiness and the willingness of banks to lend, without government interference. This would result in more prudent lending practices and a healthier housing market. The government shouldn't be guaranteeing anybody's mortgage. There's nothing in the Constitution that says the government can guarantee anybody's debt. It is completely unconstitutional for the government to do that. And why should the government guarantee somebody's debt, but not somebody else's debt? Why should one taxpayer be on the hook? If somebody wants to go out and borrow money to buy a house, let's say I don't buy a house. I'm a renter. Why should my taxes subsidize somebody else to go buy a house? Because after all, if the house goes up in value, I don't get any of that gain. But if it goes down and they default, well, I'm stuck with a loss. No, this, this is not something that the government is supposed to do. And if the government stayed out completely of the housing market, 
we had a free market, well, then, it, you know, it would be far more efficient. We wouldn't have all these problems in the real estate market. You want to buy a house? Fine. Go buy one. Save up the down payment. Find a bank who's willing to loan you the money because banks are willing to make loans. They just don't want to make bad loans. They want to make good loans. They want to make loans where they get paid back. And so they want to make sure that you can afford to repay, that you've got a decent down payment, that you've got a good job, that you've got income, that you can handle not only repaying the mortgage, but you can cover the cost of maintenance and property taxes. Home ownership is expensive, right? So the banks want to make sure that if they're loaning to somebody, they can afford it. That's all good stuff. And all that good stuff goes out the window when the government comes in with a guarantee. Because now the bank doesn't give a damn about anything. They know they can't lose, so they make the loan. And now the borrower is able to just recklessly uh, you know, borrow money uh, that he never should have been allowed to borrow because he can't possibly pay it back. And he's just gambling that uh, real estate prices are going to appreciate. And that was really a big factor in the housing bubble that ultimately bust the 2008 financial crisis. But again, instead of learning from their mistakes, they doubled down by guaranteeing uh, second mortgage.